So, I'm David Wise, and I am sitting here with my colleagues, Rodney Anderson, Tim Sawyer, John Moses. And we began, um, uh, Tim and Rodney and I, uh, doing um, the treatment of pelvic pain at Stanford in the mid-90s. And it is now 2014. What happened to the time? Boy, God. Amazing episodes. Amazing. We're in the 21st century. I still have to wrap my head around that. And um, we are here just to share and recall um, our experience and the development of a new treatment for pelvic pain that has helped many people. Um, and. I wonder, I wonder, Rodney, if you wouldn't mind, given that you are our, uh, our senior uh, uh, inspiration, um, uh, just sharing your, your experience, what led up to uh, being interested in the kind of thing that we're doing. Well, I think, David, you, you really are the senior inspiration because I was uh, sludging around in the, the trenches trying to take care of people that would come in with uh, chronic prostatitis and we were working off the old model of uh, it must be an infectious disease and they they really uh, never had any bacteria 90 percent of the time and and i was also very interested in the inflammation that was coming out of the prostate and trying to relate how could somebody not have an infection and have all this inflammation? And how could somebody have so much pain and no inflammation and no infection? And as you know, I mean, it's only about 5% of the patients that ever do have infection. So after doing that for several years, and I had a pain clinic, and uh, you showed up on my doorstep, which was a godsend. Rodney, would you mind talking about, you know, your work with Tom Stamey and with um, prostatitis at Stanford? Well, Tom Stamey really was the grandfather of uh, discovering how to isolate bacteria from the prostate. And that was his contribution to the medical literature because no one had ever really understood that, that, you know, the, the bacteria can thrive and flourish in the, uh, in the prostate gland. And yet most physicians were giving antibiotics that would never get into the prostate gland. So he did a lot of animal work and uh, patient work and figured out what was the best drug to get into the gland and be effective. But once again, he always wanted me to take over the non-bacterial patients. And suddenly I realized <laughs> most of the patients were suddenly non-bacterial. Is, right? Is that right? Yeah. And, um, and then uh, uh, all in, in, in the early 90s, um, after... Uh, close to 20 years in the early 90s of me, myself suffering from uh, what was called, they used to call it prostatosis. That's what yes. the guy told me. Yes. And then it was called prostatodynia. And then uh, it was called, uh, I don't know what it called, but he would always come whenever I went to for a, 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 an evaluation and went to the doctor because I was hurting, he would do a, he, he was good. He did a uh, prostate evaluation and a prostate fluid sample and he would come back very happy and say it's all clear right. <laughs> and then I would say well that's great that's great I'm still in pain but I'm glad there's nothing wrong with me and and then I would say to him uh, is there anybody doing any research on this and he said not really he's but he said to me it gets better as you get older and you get less sexual and I, did, oh, I, did, I didn't quite know what to do with that. You know, I, I thought it was good that it was going to get better because it was horrible. And uh, at the same time, I didn't know what to, what to make of it when he said, well, when you get less sexual, I didn't know whether that was good or bad. Um, so um, I fumbled my way into getting out of pain. Long story. And uh, uh, after... Uh, looking around in the in the area of uh, who was interested in this, someone said, um, there's a really good guy at Stanford. And so I called up Rodney and um, went in and talked to him and we began hanging out together. That was a delight because I could then take some of the, uh, the stress off by 
shifting the patients that were catastrophic <laughs> to your to your room down the hall <laughs> and and that's when we started measuring things and that that became very important we started measuring electromyographic signals coming from the pelvic floor and from you know measuring the tension and that was a real uh, eye opener of course david had already figured it out we just didn't have any measurements and we didn't have any scientific uh, uh, explorations and i think that's where we started to start to gather these things together